go through the procedure for putting this app here that I've written using Streamlit in that you can see here. Let's go through the procedure for making that publicly available on the internet. So uh, the first step is to make a GitHub repository. Yeah, I'm just going to call it test. Uh, if this is something you care more about, then you should give it a better name than this. And yeah, all of this stuff can just be left as the default. And now I'm going to upload the source code for this. So called session state.py. And then probably the newest part of this procedure is this part here about add a requirements file. And so what that means is that here I'm supposed to import streamlet and I'm supposed to import numpy. But these lines by themselves aren't enough for GitHub or for streamlet to know exactly what versions of these uh, libraries are supposed to be installed. So one easy way to see what version of these libraries I'm using is I can say, for example, st write. Or if you were in a Jupyter notebook, you could skip that and just print this out. And I'll say streamlet underscore underscore. So it's important that you have two of them version underscore underscore. And let's do the same thing for numpy np dot underscore underscore version. And I've saved it. Now let's go back to the app. So here, this is going to be for streamlet. And this is going to be for NumPy. And if you don't like that method, uh, another method, which you can see I've already done here, and this is maybe the more sophisticated way, is to type conda space list into the terminal. Okay, and that will list not just these two that I've imported, but everything that's installed in this environment. So for example, here is NumPy 1.20.3. And I need to take that information of those version numbers and put it into a requirements.txt file. Okay, there are other options also, but I've always used requirements.txt. So uh, let me save this with the name requ requirements.txt. And then I'll say um, hi equals equals 1.20.3 and streamlit equals equals. 1.0. And I'll save it. Now I'm also going to upload that file onto GitHub. Okay, this requirements.txt file. So here I have my source code and my requirements.txt file. And let's commit these changes. Okay, that seems to be working. Now let's come over to Streamlit Sharing, which is the address is here, share.streamlit.io. And here, let's, let's delete this. This is from a failed attempt that I had earlier to make this video. So new app, it automatically finds my most recent apps. Okay, this is the one that we called test. And then here I have to change it to the correct file name, which was session state. And not for any good reason, just that's what I had named the file here. And then let's click deploy. And it might take a couple minutes, but uh, eventually we'll come back and the app should be working. And now you can see we have this nice link to the file. So uh, let me try opening it in a new window. And so notice that this is a very different sort of address from the one that opens automatically in the browser when we run it through the terminal. For example, that one is this localhost colon 8501, whereas this is some publicly accessible link that anybody can visit and anybody can interact with the same way we could on our own computer.